Michelle Pippin, and you are watching another episode of the Women Entrepreneur Success Show, and this is brought to you by Women Who Wow, the premier coaching and mentoring platform for the seriously driven woman entrepreneur. I am so glad that you're here today because we are talking about the art of dealing with your competition, the art of dealing with the competition. And this is something that all of us have to deal with. I get a lot of emails about that, especially from women who are feeling like they may be took too long to implement their idea. They're having a little bit of regret for staying in prep preparation mode for so long because they were overtaken by people who went straight to market and moved faster than them, et cetera. And so this is something that we kind of have to, uh, to deal with. Unfortunately, the most common way of dealing with a competitor is to look at them, mirror them almost, and then maybe try to undercut them by like seven cents or something like that. That actually happened to me uh, locally um, years and years ago, over a decade ago, but I'll never forget it. I had, um, I had a physical office at that time because it made me feel super fancy. And I was doing an, an in-person kind of club or something like that. It was, it was a paid kind of um, opportunity. And <clears throat> one of the members of that club began to start her own little club membership, I guess is what you'd call it before me membership was cool. And she was going to start her own and she decided that she would like basically take the exact same sales copy I used, I guess it, you know, smart of her because it worked. Um, and then she undercut me offering the same thing, I think by like seven cents. But the truth is that's one of the number one ways that people try to deal with competitors or competition. And it's a, it's a really ineffective and feckless way to deal with the comp competition. However, it's the top way. It's the most common way. And nobody really wants to uh, compete like that, right? Like nobody really wants to um, compete in such a way where you're just like trying to maybe undercut them by seven cents or 10 cents or even a dollar or whatever. Um, recently, when my son was in uh, the children's hospital, the king's daughters and uh, we were on the oncology floor and my son does not need to be on the oncology floor thank god but um, they were unsure about that so that's where we were and um, because he had mononucleosis and I think because we're unvaccinated they uh, anytime they came in and out of the room <clears throat> they put on these like throwaway scrubs right throw away booties throw away um, full suits and um, and throw away gloves and so our big full trash can was always full with these scrubs and um, and my dad who is like me is an entrepreneur and he's like uh, he's like we need to figure out how to sell these scrubs, right? Like they're, look at that thing. They are, they feel that they with like 50 or 60 scrubs. Anytime they came in or out of our room, they had to um, put on the scrubs and then take them off and throw them away. <clears throat> And so, but I told my dad, I was like, I have zero interest in that. Like trying to figure out how to make something that already exist and then undercut them by what, a penny or two on each scrub sold, right? So we were kind of having that, um, that uh, dialogue, but that's one of the top ways that people try to deal with the competitors, try to undercut them, do the same thing they're doing and give somebody a discount on price. Here's the thing, you don't really give value when you're just selling it cheaper, right? You don't give them anything extra. You might give them $5 extra in their pocket, which they might waste at Starbucks or whatever, but it doesn't really give any value, you know? Um, there's a much better way to deal with the competitors, but that's a number one way. I do not recommend it. In fact, I recommend going the opposite way, right? Like I recommend being like reassuringly expensive, you know, if you're gonna compete on price. Although I actually, say don't compete on price. You know, the truth is if you compete with on price, you're gonna die by price, that's the, that's the key. So you really wanna compete with something that is so, it's different, right? It's something they can't get elsewhere, right? These are the, the ways you compete with competitors. We wanna get into more about that. Um, but another common way of being, uh, of dealing with competition, especially for women entrepreneurs, is we try to be better in some way. And we try to like, you know, maybe get additional certification or make our products look more professional or do more headshots or we try to be better in some way. And the truth is this is also sort of a very limiting way to deal with competitors. Sophie, no, sorry. 
um, it's this very limited way. I want to tell you a quick story that probably will uh, reveal a lot more about me than I maybe want to reveal. Um, I'm a softball mom, and my um, daughter, Shelby, plays softball, and I love watching her play. And she was on a travel team for a long time, and all of the travel parents were, like, super close and, and all of that. And one time we were, um, we, were, we were playing against this team, and they were really rattling us, right? They were really rattling our girls. And what this team was doing was they were, um, you know, singing all these chants like, good eye, good eye, G-O-O-D-E-Y-E. -E. They're singing all these little these, um, songs from the bench, right? So they were singing all this, like, loud. And, you know, our girls could hardly even hear each other in the field because these girls were in the dugout, like, singing all these, like, softball chants and all of this stuff. And our girls were getting rattled. They couldn't communicate on the field. They were, um, you know, the, the energy coming from the other dugout was making an impact as energy always does, right? And so I'm watching our girls like kind of not play like they should and not play like they could. And I was kind of getting, you know, frustrated by it. Plus I was being frustrated by the freaking noise of them like constantly chanting over there. And so um, I waited for a, a pause in their little chanting. And I have a pretty loud voice and I said, uh, I said, hey girls, I was like, don't worry about it. They sing better than they swing, right? And that, by the way, was the truth. And it kind of struck the girls kind of funny. Um, the softball team was used to hearing me yell over anybody else. And it kind of, um, it kind of shook them up like in a good way. It kind of like jolted them back to, you know what? We're, she's right. They do sing better than they swing. This isn't cheerleading. This is softball. We can beat these people, right? Like, so it, it kind of like, um, it, it was funny and it was meant to be funny, but it was, um, but it was meant to kind of disrupt the balance of power in that game. I don't know how else to say it, right? Um, when I said that, I was like, hey girls, they sing better than they swing. When I said that, the other team, they didn't look at it as singing, right? And they weren't doing really well at bat. And it was kind of like a truth kind of thing and it kind of like made them kind of doubt. They started chanting a little bit lower and a little, a lot less actually. And our girls were like, that's right. Like it kind of, you know, tipped the, it disrupted things, right? It disrupted things. There was a pattern going on in that game and it was working for the competition. And <clears throat> when I shouted that out, it kind of, it just turned things just slightly. And so, um, so that is really, I think, the best way to deal with competition, which I'm gonna go into in a little bit more, uh, actually probably a lot more detail in the next couple of minutes. But when you think of the competition, you don't wanna just kind of undercut them by price. If anything, you wanna be reassuringly expensive in your market. Your pricing does speak for you on your behalf, right? Um, the, um, you don't want to deal with your competition by being just a, a little bit better or try to be incrementally better than them. Um, that's kind of a limiting thing because there's only so far up you can go in that regard, right? Like, you know, if you're constantly, I'm a little bit better, you're a little bit better, I'm a little bit better, you're a little bit better. It's like a, it's not a really strong positioning statement, right? And there's always like somebody nipping at your heels. So it's a really disempowering way uh, to deal with the competition. But if you consider like my story of they sing better than they swing, and I hope you don't judge me for that, right? Like I really get into, uh, into the sports that my kids are in, and in particular Shelby softball, because I just love the girls like they're my own. But the truth is, the best way to deal with your competition um, one is to be aware enough of them that you can just like, you know, acknowledge them, but don't obsess over them. Don't read their copy. Don't do any of that. Um, but you want to find ways to disrupt their rhythm, right? To disrupt their rhythm. Um, you'll see me talking a lot more about affiliates these days, and there's a very specific reason for that, right? It disrupts and has people thinking about um, a common investment made by women entrepreneurs at this time of the year, right? Because it's sold largely or if not exclusively through affiliates. And so you'll see me talking about that because I just want to disrupt the way people are thinking. I want them thinking in a different way. Um, politically, you see this a lot, right? If you're looking. A lot of people aren't looking. Or especially politically, people aren't looking, um, I guess, critically. 
I, I guess would be the way to say it. But politically, you see this, right? Where um, if somebody is, you know, we talk about disrupting a pattern, right? So like if somebody is striving and they're constantly feel like they're losing, they're losing, they're losing, they're striving. It's like they're leaning, leaning, leaning. All you have to do is make to make them fall is to give them a little win, right? Because it's just like if you're you're leaning too far on a bike, right? And then one little thing happens and you topple because you are off balance, right? So when you're thinking about your competition, where are they off balance? Where are they um, leaning too far forward? Um, because that is where you want to disrupt them, right? And so it's sort of the same as the, they sing better than they swing. There was an energy imbalance, there was a power imbalance in that game and it was going in the wrong direction. And so that one little thing could change the dynamic. And when you look at your competitors, don't think in terms of if you can be a little bit cheaper or a little bit better, think about how you can disrupt the industry, disrupt the market. Think about, this is not, I used to think of disrupt the market in terms of you know, being like the most famous in the market, most well known. No, 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 right? You can disrupt the market. You can start getting people to think more critically about a different component that you offer and maybe your competitors don't. You can start to um, disrupt the market by simply um, changing or, or starting to change perception about one aspect to where your competitors are overexposed, right? So um, you want to interrupt their patterns, I guess, right? So you want to think about where you can shine, where you can shine. So for example, with Women Who Wow, you'll see me talking a lot about like the high drive women, right? High drive women want to be around other high drive women, but also high touch, high touch. Like we know our people, we know when our people are in the hospital, we know, um, you know, when they're having a, a struggle, we know about boyfriends, we know about kids, like that kind of thing. So it's high drive, but it's also high touch. And I don't know how long I can say that for, but I can say it now. And it is a, an area that we shine. Uh, women who out also shines with regards to no BS, like not a lot of fluff, no filter, no filler. And so it's something that we want to call out. So when you're thinking about how you want to deal with or the art of dealing with a competitor, then you want to think in terms of a pattern interrupt or a industry disruption, right? It doesn't have to be huge. The major news stations don't have to be involved in it. You just have to start getting your people to think differently or to think more critically about one thing, right? So for me, you're going to see me talking about affiliate relationships. Um, so how can you shine, right? And so when I am right now uh, promoting P school, the other business school alternative, right? Uh, it's profit school and it's not basic, right? It's not, um, you know, hyper focused on conformity or or anything like that. What it is is hyper focused on profit and selling and taking your business to the bank, right? And so it's going to be something that is easy for me to quote unquote sell against or to um, interrupt a pattern where there there's a overexposure in the market right now because of the high number of very popular affiliates, right? You see where I'm going here. It's, it, it's overexposed. Everybody's thinking about it. So it only takes a little bit, a little minute to interrupt that pattern and have people start to think about it a little bit um, differently. So when you're thinking about your competition, you want to look at them, have an awareness of them and think about two things. So one thing is where do you shine? Where do you naturally exceed your people's expectations? Where do you naturally surprise them? Where do you naturally like over, go over and above? Where are you naturally disrupting the market just by being who you are? And the second thing is, where are your competitors overexposed? Maybe they're overexposed because of so much, um, I'm trying to think, uh, technology, right? Like maybe they have, um, outsource so much that they're not really in touch with their whatever they're selling. Maybe they are overexposed by um, just being flooding the market. Maybe they're overexposed due to any number of things, right? You want to just kind of look at like where are they kind of exposed and where do you shine? And that's really what you want to put the focus on when you're dealing with competitors. If you are focusing on 
price, competing by price, compete by price, you will die by price, that's the Dan Kennedy quote, and, um, and or even think about how can I be a little bit better. That's almost like, it looks like it would be a race to the top, but that mentality is really a race to the bottom, right? It's like a little bit better, a little bit better, and, and, and we're just like in a competitive kind of atmosphere, which is um, draining, actually. So you wanna think about pattern interrupt, and I hope that you appreciate my story, the singing better than they swing. It was, um, it was not one of my proudest moments, but it did do, <laughs> it did do the job. And um, and you want to think about the, the interrupting the pattern. And you might also want to look at that in politics and see how that plays out. Um, little teeny temporary wins that one party um, gets and and runs with, and it's like, oh, don't you see? It's a pattern interrupt. Like they they just they just gotcha. Sierra is back. I came in late. Can you elaborate on how someone can be overexposed? Absolutely. So um, overexposed, you know, it can be in any. You know, your competitors can be overexposed. Let's say that. They they do not have a very, um, you know, any one-on-one -on -one in their program. So, for instance, um, one main program that's being sold right now has something called um, coaches who will answer your questions. Well, here's the deal. As an entrepreneur, I find it highly suspect that any employee would be answering my questions about growing my business, right? Like that is a uh, an irony that should not be. Um, so I, as a matter of fact, I actually was talking with uh, Chandler Bolt. I don't know if you guys know him. I met him last year and I really, really liked him. And I was gonna sign up for one of his programs. It was like $5,000, $8,000, I can't really remember. And so um, I, went, I, I was turned off by that when by that program and they said, oh, and you'll have access to Chandler's coaches. And I said, wait, how many, it was a book publishing program, and I said, well, how many of Chandler's coaches have written a book? <laughs> how many of Chandler's coaches are self-employed? <laughs> They're paid by Chandler. They have a, a job, right? Well, that's, that is one way that a lot of entrepreneurial programs with big names are overexposed because they are having people who depend on a weekly or biweekly paycheck coaching you answering your entrepreneurial questions, right? That's, that's a, should be a sin, should be against the law, right? Because it it's, doesn't make any common sense. Like somebody who has a J-O-B should not be giving advice to somebody who's making it on their own. Um, so that's one way you can be overexposed. You can be overexposed with too much marketing, right? Where you're flooding the, um, the airways, you're flooding the inboxes and people are kind of getting sick of it. You can be overexposed um, with, let's see, um, what are some other ways? You can be overexposed by, uh, your competitors might be overexposed by discounting too much, right? There's a lot of, um, back in the, the days when Groupon was first coming on the scene, I had private clients back then, and my private clients would have a field day with other professionals in their industry and in their area who were overexposed by offering deals and freebies and cheap prices and so we went after that right and it's like hey you know what we don't offer to do one eye for free and lasix because we are trained professionals and you only have two eyes you do not want to risk one to somebody who doesn't really want to do it for free like we went after them right because they were overexposed by giving too many discounts overexposed with using too many affiliates overexposed with too much promotion overexposed um with let's say too much gloss right too much gloss um, and and professionalism that kind of keeps people at a distance, right? There's any number of things that um, where you've decided, if you've determined where you shine, the opposite side of that is largely where you can find a competitor that is overexposed. Now, I don't always recommend going directly after a competitor. Um, it, you know, especially in a mean, uh, a mean way. Like when I'm even talking about the other business school, right? I'm, I'm doing it tongue in cheek. I'm doing it fun. Uh, the content provided in profit school. One, it's free. It's nothing I'm selling. But two, it is um, nothing like what is on the sales page for that other business school. But I'm just kind of doing it as a in a tongue in cheek kind of way. But um, I do recommend that you are aware of your competitors so that you know what to dial up in your marketing. So you know how to make where you really shine more visible 
and also um, point out where other programs might be lacking in that area. This is a great way for small businesses to compete against much larger brands and much larger businesses um, because you can um, they're overexposed just in terms of their bigness, right? They're overexposed in <clears throat> visibility, right? And so these are these are things that um, that you can use. Does that answer your question, Sierra? I hope that answers your question. Um, I'm gonna wait just a minute for any other questions that come up. But um, Brenda, Sierra, Jim. All right, so. That was today's episode of the Women Entrepreneur Success Show. You can now binge watch the Women Entrepreneur Success Show on our um, our video page at womenwhowow.tv. And um, Sierra, welcome back. I appreciate you being here, and I will talk with you guys later on. I'll be back tomorrow from another episode of Coaching from the Couch, which is pretty much the same as this but a little bit more casual. I actually put on makeup for you guys today. Um, I know you can thank me for that later. Um, anyway, I appreciate you all, and I'll be back tomorrow. If you have any questions that you want me to answer um, on one of the Coaching from the Couch sessions or um, within membership, if you have any questions, definitely message me, m.me backslash women who wow or um, email me if you have my email, and or put a comment down below. And if I don't answer it right now, obviously, because I don't see it come in, I will certainly um, answer it in another episode. So appreciate you. Bye.